Good evening, everyone, and welcome to King's Kids, a nightly bedtime story. My name is Mr. Breedlove, and this is my wife, Mrs. Breedlove, and this is my son, Christian. Christian, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hi. Mrs. Breedlove and I have the opportunity and the privilege to work with many of the children at Mainland Baptist Church uh, in many different ministries, such as the bus ministry, Champion Baptist Academy, and many other uh, opportunities that God gives us, and we're so thankful for that privilege that we have. Tonight's bedtime story is entitled, Goodbye Pharaoh. Let's everybody say that together. You guys ready? Yep. Goodbye, Goodbye Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about how God saved his people from that mean ruler in Egypt, Pharaoh. And at this time, Mrs. Breedlove is gonna to read tonight's bedtime story. All right, boys and girls, are you ready for tonight's story? Just like Mr. Breedlove said, to the name of tonight's story is Goodbye, Pharaoh. So what I'm going to try and do here for us tonight, I'm going to share my screen with you. So this way I can show you these cool illustrations that we have prepared for you today. All right. So again, the name of our story is Goodbye, Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a king, right? So Let's get into the story. Pharaoh was angry. God had commanded him through Moses to let the Israelite slaves leave Egypt. Do you think he listened, Christian? No. No, he did not. He refused to listen. Well, because Mo Moses had told him to let them go, Pharaoh was not happy. He made them work even harder. He ordered his slave masters to work them even harder. And now things were getting even worse for the Israelites. Gather your own straw. We won't provide it any longer, said Pharaoh. But make the same number of bricks. Those were Pharaoh's new orders. Is that a lot of bricks, Christian? Yeah. Do you think it would be hard to put all those bricks up together and build a wall is what they're doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be very hard. The taskmasters whipped some slaves, too, because they didn't have time to gather straw and still make enough bricks. So they would whip them. Now, the people... blamed Moses and Aaron for their troubles. Moses found a place to pray. Oh Lord, he cried out to the Lord, you have not rescued your people at all. I am the Lord and I will bring you out, God answered. Then God sent Moses and Aaron back to Pharaoh. When the mighty ruler asked God's servants for a sign from God, Aaron's rod turned into a slithering snake. That's a cool looking snake, right, Christian? Yeah. Do you think it looks dangerous? Yeah. yeah. Call my magicians, Pharaoh roared. When the Egyptian magi magicians threw down their rods, each rod became a snake. But you know what? Aaron's rod swallowed the other snakes. Still, Pharaoh was not impressed, and he still refused to let them go. But then, the next morning, Moses and Aaron met Pharaoh at the river. When Aaron, you see Aaron holding out his rod mm -hmm. over the river, he held out the rod and guess what happened? God turned the water into blood. Look at this river, Christian. Is it blue as it was? Yeah. No, it turned into blood and all the fish started dying and the people didn't have any water to drink from and, and wash their clothes <coughs> in. God bless you. But Pharaoh hardened his heart. 
Do you think he let the Israelites go? No. No. He still would not let the Israelites leave Egypt. Again, Moses told Pharaoh to let God's people go, and Pharaoh refused again. Well, God sent another plague. What do you think that plague was? Frogs. Frogs. Look at all these frogs. All of Egypt was filled with frogs. Every house, every room, even the cooking ovens were run over with frogs. Imagine you go into bed. How would you like sleeping with a bunch of frogs jumping on you? Would you like that? No, we would not like that. Pray for me that God will remove the frogs. Pharaoh pleaded with Moses, and I will let you people go. Well, the frogs were gone because Moses prayed. Do you think Pharaoh, let, Pharaoh stood up to his promise and let them go? What do you think, Christian? No. no, he didn't. He changed his mind again, and he would not free the slaves. God sent billions of tiny bugs called lice. They're these pesky little bugs that go in your hair and all over your body, and every person and beast, they itched and itched. Have you ever been bitten by a bug, Christian? Yeah. yeah. Does it itch? Yeah. Yeah, imagine all, having all these bites all over you. Every person was itching, and Pharaoh would still not give in to God. Next, God sent flies, swarms of them. God sent disease to kill the Egyptians' livestock. And then God sent painful boils. Look at this person. His face is covered with boils and they were so painful and the people suffered terribly. But still, Pharaoh resisted to listen to God. After the plague of boils, God sent hordes of locusts. The locusts ate every green plant of the land. And what do we need plants for, Christian? Food. Food, right? Then God sent three days of complete darkness. Do you think Pharaoh would listen now? No. No. Three days, total darkness. Pharaoh would still not free the Israelites. And God said, you know what? I will send one more plague. About midnight, all the firstborn of men and beast will die. But God told the Israelites their firstborn would be saved if they placed the lamb's blood on their doorposts. Do you see the blood on the doorpost, Christian? Yeah. Every Israelite had that on their door, had to put that on their door, so this way they would be safe. So at midnight, a great cry arose in Egypt. And death had struck. At least one person had died in every single house. Imagine, we all have neighbors, right? Imagine in every single house over the night that one person would die. Get out, Pharaoh begged Moses. Go, serve the Lord quickly. God's people marched beyond Egypt's border so he finally let them go and you see them christian mm -hmm. how they're all going in the middle of the night and god told moses to remember the passover night because the angel of god had passed over the israelite homes and struck pharaoh and his people he protected israelites right but he only struck pharaoh and his people after 430 years in egypt that's how long they were in Egypt. That's a lot of years. Finally, God's people were now free. God led them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Why do you think there was a fire, uh, a pillar of fire by night? To see where they're going. Exactly. Very good. So they can see where they were going. But you know what? Pharaoh was not finished. He was not happy. He let them go. Again, he forgot about God. He changed his mind, gathered his armies, sent them after the slaves. Soon, he had them trapped between the cliffs and the sea. <clears throat> the Lord shall fight for you, Moses said. Moses went forward to the water's edge and stretched out his arm 
And what happened here, Christian? The Red Sea split. Yes, <clears throat> a miracle happened. God opened a path through the water. Look at this. There's water on both sides, but the Israelites are safe walking through this path, crossing safely on the other side. Then Pharaoh's army went right into the, into the Red Sea, trying to cross the path that God had made into the sea. And they, and now we'll catch them, the soldier, the soldiers taught and said, but God closed the waters and Egypt's powerful army was swallowed up in the waters. And now Pharaoh knew that Israel's God was Lord over all. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Now, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story. I'm going to share, um, stop sharing my screen and Mr. Breedlove will talk to you. All right. What a great story we heard to hear tonight. And Moses told God's people that the Lord will fight for you. What an amazing truth that is. The Bible story that we heard here tonight tells us all about our wonderful God who made us and who wants us to know him. You know, God knows that we have done bad things. Those bad things that we have done, God calls it sin. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that breaks God's law and makes God sad. Now, God, the Bible tells us there's a punishment for sin, and that punishment is death. And that's what we all deserve. We all deserve death. And the Bible tells us that there is a place uh, called hell for people that have broken God's law and haven't trusted Jesus as their Savior. But you know, God doesn't want anyone to go to that, that place uh, that he has created called hell for, for those that didn't trust Jesus as their Savior. God doesn't want that for anyone. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God isn't willing for any to perish but for all to come to repentance and have everlasting life. The Bible says in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, Jesus was given to us by God to die on the cross and to shed his blood so that we can be saved for, from our sins. Jesus was punished so that we don't have to be punished. And just like God saved the Israelites from death when they cut the lamb and killed the lamb and they put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost, Jesus' blood saves us from death. So he died on a cross and was punished for our sins, but he didn't just, he didn't stay there. Jesus came back to life three days later and then went to heaven to be at home with his father. If you believe in Jesus, you can ask him to forgive you of your sins. He will do it. He will come into your life now and you will live for him, with him forever. If you, want to, if you want forgiveness of your sins and you want to live with Jesus forever, this is what I want you to do. Just say this prayer with me. Let's, guys, let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes. And if you want forgiveness from your sins, I want you to go ahead and just repeat the prayer that I'm saying now. Now, the, remember, the prayer doesn't save you. It's Jesus that saves you. You're asking Jesus to come into your heart. So go ahead and say this prayer with me if you, if you want to live with Jesus forever. Dear God, I believe that Jesus died for me. And now 
he lives again. Please come into my life and forgive me of my sins so that I can have new life now and one day go to be with you forever. Help me to live for you as your child. Amen. Amen. I hope maybe that some of you may have said that prayer with me tonight. And if you did, ask your mommy and daddy to give Mrs. Leeds a call in the, in the office at the church at any time and just let us know about it. We would love to hear about it. And don't forget, read your Bible and talk with God every day. Thank you for joining us for our bedtime story tonight on King's Kids. And we hope that you will join again on Monday morning for another episode at 8.25 p.m. All right. That's it for now, everyone. And don't forget, you, you are, are a King's, King's kid. kid.